Hi there, Kiwi Kaja here and welcome to episode 34 entitled Te Rao Paraha, The Battle for Kafia. Now for this episode we go back in time to 1820, the summer of 1820, January, February, March, somewhere in that period. This is about the same time that uh, Hongi Hika was organising to go over to England. And we've gone back in time in order to bring Te Rao Paraha into the story of the musket wars because after Hongi Hika, he has probably the most profound effect, um, especially on the tribes of the southern half of the North Island and for the tribes of the South Island as well. So who was Ta Te Rao Paraha? Well, he was the paramount chief of the Ngāti Toa Rangatira, or commonly known as the Ngāti Toa and they occupied the area around Kafia Harbour. Now, Taraprahar, 1820, he is about uh, 50 years old, and he has quite a reputation. Unfortunately, for the Waikato tribes, the reputation is lousy. He has been such a nuisance. He's the sort of guy that can't be relied upon, can't be trusted. He's the Machiavellian character, of the musket wars. He's quite brilliant, strategically excellent, and um, but you know, he just seems to get himself into trouble. He's he's very wayward. And so the Waikato tribes uh, have decided that he's so much of pain in the neck that they want to get rid of him. They want him out. They either want him dead or they want him gone. And so that leads us into the battle for Kafia. So let's just have a quick look and uh, let's set the scene for this. Okay, so here we have a Google map of the uh, Auckland down to Taupo. We have Auckland here, we come down to the Waikato River here, come further down to the Ragland Harbour or Whangaroa and coming on down we have the uh, Aotea Harbour and in here we have the Kafia Harbour. All this area here is the Waikato tribes. And down the coast here we have tribes that are supporting Te Rao Paraha. So let's just have a look at the Rohe for the various uh, for the various tribes. So we have Ngāti Toa. They are on the southern border of uh, the Kafia Harbour and have the Taharoa, Lake Taharoa, and various other lakes in there. Now, this all this information is coming from the book King Pōtitao, uh, which is about Te Whero Whero, uh, and it's by Peter Hironui Jones, and I will be using the account in that book uh, to relay the story. The account by Pei is quite uh, coherent, and um, makes good reading, uh, although Pei is a member of the Ngāti Maniapoto, part of the Waikato tribe, so he has a bias towards them, but let's not worry about that. So on the other shore we have the Ngāti Kawata, the here. Uh, south we have the Ngāti Akama Puya, and coming on down we have the Ngāti Rarua. Now further south as well we have the Ngāti Tama. So these tribes are an alliance and they're going to be facing off against the Waikato tribes that have decided that Tarabraha has to go or Tarao Paraha has to go. Okay, so here we have the Ngāti Tahinga, the Ngāti Tawehi, Ngāti Hikaro, Ngāti, Ngāti Maniapoto and the Ngāti Mahanga. So the tribes and reds they actually stretch further back in here, uh, but for the for the purpose of this, this looks fine. So the tribes and red are the ones that are going to be uh, trying to oust Tarao Paraha and his alliance. Okay, so that sets the scene. Most of the action is going to be occurring around the uh, Kafia area in here. So Te Whero Whero, who is the supreme leader of the Waikato forces, Te Rāpraha is the supreme leader of the uh, Ngāti Toa forces, um, 
Te Whero Whero has devised a plan. It's been months in the making. Everyone has been geared up to know their part. It's really just a matter of saying go. Similarly to Rao Paraha knows that an attack is coming. He's been strengthening his defences. And the only trouble is, of course, he doesn't know when it's all going to happen. So everything is kind of set. So the plan organised by Te Whero Whero is to have a southerly attack, which comes down and attacks uh, any fortifications in the south coming up the coast here. He's going to have another force that will come across from the east and he's also going to have a sea-bound force coming down the coast and attacking from there. So he's got a three-pronged attack uh, from the north, from the south, and from the east. So these are Tarao Paraha's pas that he's going to use to defend against this attack. His southernmost one, Waikawa, <coughs> is here. If we zoom in closer we find that on the northern side we have two pa, Motunayo and Puewe, which I think is now called the Makatu pa. Uh, there is a pa on the uh, tip of the um, southern head of the Kafia Harbour called Tamaika pa, and this is going to, this is going to be, um, it's not going to be heavily manned, it's going to be um, lightly manned, but mainly it's a watch post to see any activity coming into the harbour. Most of the forces of um, Te Rao Paraha are going to be stationed at his main pa at Totropa. Down on the lakes of Tahara, we have two other major pa's, Te Kawao pa and Te Roto pa. So these are the pa's that are going to be used to defend the area. Te Reo Paraha has also set up a number of small outposts to keep an eye on any troop movements. So the scene is set. It's all awaiting Te Whero Whero to say go. And in the early summer of um, 1820, the word is given to go. The whole strategy depends on uh, most of the various, the, the southern, the eastern and the northern um, assault forces arriving pretty much on the same day, trying to overwhelm Te Rao Paraha and his forces. So let's, let's have a look how this pans out. The Waikato forces have gathered at Whangaraha Harbour, Mangatautoa Pa and Arapai Pa. 1,000 troops here, 2,000 warriors here, and 1,000 warriors here. Uh, their day has been assigned to when they should arrive in the Kafi area. Tuko Rehu uh, from the Arapai Pa leaves first with his 1,000 warriors, and he's going to attack the Waikawa Pa. As soon as this attack, he's, he's allowed four days for this attack. But as soon as the attack occurs, runners from uh, Waikawa make their way up to Kavia and uh, inform Te Rao Paraha, who is now stationed at the Totorapa, that uh, a southerly attack has occurred. So immediately to to, uh, Te Rao Paraha is thinking, oh, oh, things that look like that are starting to occur here. Uh, eventually, after four days, the pa falls and Tokurehu makes his way up north. The force, there is a force that is assembled in the Whangaroa Harbour here under the command of Kiwi. The force leaves on the very early hours of uh, the day that they are all supposed to um, coincide with their meeting in uh, the Kafi area. They make their way down to the mouth of the Aotea Harbour. Half the force goes into Aotea Harbour, beaches their canoe and makes their way overland to the pass sites of Motunayo and Puewe. The other force slowly makes its way down and into the harbour to coincide with the arrival of the northerly force. Obviously the pa at Tamaika witnesses this. Uh, Te Rao Paraha uh, organises initially to strengthen the force uh, at Tamaika, uh, but then he retracts those force 
and he organises to send a, um, a force over to this area here to protect any um, enemy movement down this area to attack to Totrapa. The main force um, of the Waikato is at Mangatoatoa. They leave and make their way across around about the, when they get to this area here, a force of, uh, of the Ngāti Hikaro under uh, Rangi Tuatea make their way across to join up with the force that's coming down from Whangaroa. Most of the force then makes its way across and no resistance is, is, is found because as soon as um, Taraprahā knows it's starting to happen, he organises for all his people to head to the main pa. First resistance by uh, 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 Tafera meet is at the Kinohaku Gap here. Uh, runners in turn uh, make their way up and uh, are informing um, Te Rao Paraha of what's happening. Uh, Te Whero Whero breaks through the uh, Kinohaku Gap and sends a force to clear out all the uh, lookout forts that are here. Uh, he then makes his way over to the Taharoa Lakes here. Now, things are happening very fast for Tarao Paraha. He's got runners coming in telling him about all the various events that are happening, and he's getting quite worried. He decides that he is going to possibly get cut off by Te Whero Whero's forces coming through on the northern part of the um, Lake Tahara. So he organises to abandon everything up there. So he organises to bring his forces all the way back to the to Kawao Pa. And he arrives there just in time before he would possibly get cut off by Te Whero Whero's main force, which is travelling along the northern side of Lake Tahara. Another force is sent off to clear the southern side of Lake Tahara. And so after a day or two, we're not sure of exactly the period of time, we have all the forces, all the forces of Tarao Paraha are locked up. Some up here in the Tupa near Kafia, where Kafia is today. This is where modern Kafia is today. The rest are locked up in these two parts here, Takawa and Toroto. All of the Waikato forces have now merged and are congregating here. A number of the force of the Waikato force that are guarding or sieging uh, these two par, they realise they don't need as many as they uh, have, so a large number of them make their way down through the uh, Totra par, which has been abandoned, and come down and join the forces of um, Te Whero So Kiwi and all the others are now here in this area of Taharoa. One of those quirky things that occurs is that um, Te Reo Paraha, around about this stage, comes down with an incredible case of some disease which causes boils to form all over him, and he is in complete agony and completely useless. So he hands his uh, command over to his nephew, uh, Te Rangi Hayata, and uh, he retreats with a with a small group across to um, his impregnable pa at Arawi, and uh, so that's that's what we have at the moment. All the forces are now uh, where I've just mentioned. So decisions have to be made, both by the Ngāti Toa Alliance and also by the Waikato Alliance. So, Te Paraha makes his way back 
to the uh, the Kawal Pa. An assembly of all the chiefs occurs there, and they have to make a decision as to what they're going to do. Around about the same time, the Waikato forces are here, and they have to make a decision as with as to whether they attack these Pa, or whether they put them under siege. So Te Reo Paraha is here, he has all his chiefs. Now a number of these chiefs have come from south and uh, from supporting tribes and they want to fight. They came to fight, they want to fight. Many of the other chiefs just say no, we need to break through in small groups and head south. We should be safe, we head south. Others want to head south in a, in a, major, in a major move. Um, Te Reo Paraha listens to all the arguments and then he decides that actually we will fight. Uh, the decision that is trying to be made by the Waikato, of course, is their hand is forced by Te Rao Paraha's uh, decision. So the fight is determined that it is going to go ahead, and that's going to occur on a battlefield that has been pre-prepared. In anticipation of a possible fight, Ngāti Tara Alliance have set fire to this area here and cleared it of all shrubbery so that it makes a good battlefield. Um, word has got to uh, the Waikato that in fact a battle is to be scheduled for the following morning and the forces from Te Kawao and Te Roto, they make their way to one side of the battlefield. The forces from Te Whero Whero make their way to the other side of the battlefield. So the Battle of Te Kakara, Te Kakara, man I have trouble saying that word, anyway, um, is about to occur and it's a famous battle and that's going to be the subject of another uh, episode. Uh, we won't cover it now but what I will do uh, is mention that I went down to this area as I do and I've droned most of the places that are involved in this story and what I'm going to do is have a separate um, video which is the next video which uh, allows you to go and have a look at this place and get some spatial awareness <coughs> of the places and the events so that will be my next episode but the one after that will be the battle of Te Kakara um, so until then that's where this one finishes until then take it easy and uh, be safe out there